Welcome back from the break. You're still watching NBS Live at 9 with me, Isabella Tugume, and Kanari Mugume. President Yoko Kokuta Museveni has oftentimes come out to openly speak about corruption and his willingness to curb it. But it seems like a figure of speech. Some officials within his government have become corruption enablers and are on rampage. NBS Investigates has been undercover with David O'Colonel, an Irish national whose life has been reduced to day-to-day -to -day survival. This is a story of pain and agony. Shamim Nabakoza exposes officials eating off corruption in this masterpiece. It seemed to be a business event. Corruption, impunity, compromise. The corrupt have taken over Uganda. Anyone who has wealth is targeted. Telling me to get off my farm. This is my farm. An absolute nightmare. A foreigner can win a case, a foreigner can lose a case. We can talk about that later. When you have a force that is in discipline, you don't have an institution. Full stop. Do you want me to explain exactly what happened? It's not nice. Uh, okay, should I explain exactly what happened? Okay, no problem. Um, at the moment, um, I've been living in Uganda um, permanently since uh, 2005. David Michael Connell is a 64 years old Irish national who 20 years ago took a decision to semi-retire in Uganda. You know, I've had too many winters. I don't like the winters. Um, summer is obviously quite nice in Europe, but you know, you have an excellent climate in Uganda. David Kim as an investor with an investment plan into the agriculture sector. After quite a bit of thought, I thought I'd get involved in farming. David has taken several lessons ever since. Some are hard earned lessons as a foreigner. After his arrival in Uganda in 2002, he met Catherine Nakawoza, who later became his partner, and they bore three children. David and Catherine had good moments together. I mean, we were staying together. I was staying in hotels when I was coming on holiday. But when I moved in 2005, we, we, we stayed together um, first in Nalia, then we moved to Zana, just off in Tebi Road, Nyanama Road. Um, then when I got the farm, I bought the farm, so Zana was too far to go to the farm in Namayumba every day. So then I moved to Nansena, and I was in Nansena for four years. David is quite an outspoken man and has his personal opinions about life. I actually don't believe in marriage. You know, if you want to live with somebody, you live with somebody. I'm not a bad guy. You know, I, I've never cheated people. This opinion is now his main source of his current troubles. He claims to have been tricked into a marriage that has never been by his ex-partner, Catherine Nakaoza. So we do the engagement party and I gave her a lot of money and she organized everything. I just turned up. Jen Chiwanuka, Catherine's mother, was in attendance that day and her recollection of events on that day is different. <laughs> They tried to get me to wear a kanzu. I said, no, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a Ugandan. I'm not African. You know, I like the place. I get on well with Africans, but I'm, I'm a Muslim guy. I'd always be Irish. So I, I didn't, I refused to wear any kanzu or anything like that. I just went with a shirt and a, and a trousers. My friend Steve came, dressed similar to me. Steve, you know, the English guys, he's a good friend of mine, very good friend. Stephen Gillam 
is David's longtime friend and he too was in attendance. They said it wasn't an introduction, it was more like Kachala. Uh, but I know since that time people have claimed that it was an introduction. Kuchala is a traditional process towards marriage where a fiancé gives the first official visit to the woman's family to be officially recognized and agree on a required bride price. The fiancé travels with few members of his family to help him begin the bride price with the woman's family. And David's was understood to be one of that kind. We were all totally confused. It just seemed to me not an introduction, a loving introduction, it didn't seem, it seemed to be a business event, as though some paperwork needed to be done. It was indeed a business signing. David was got to sign a Buganda introduction certificate unknowingly. The certificate confirms his customary marriage. Um, I saw all, all of them had signed it. I was the last to sign. So when I asked them what it was, they said it's just a record of the ceremony. That's what I was told. It's just for the record. So okay, let me sign it. So what they did, they actually used that in court against me to say I was married. I, I never got married. This is and has been a point of contention for David and Catherine to prove their marriage status. David now holds memories of agony with Catherine. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, worst day of my life, I'll be honest. <laughs> but um... Since then, life for them has turned into an ending court battles. The contentions to prove the status of marriage, but also property. In 2016, Catherine filed a divorce in the Chief Magistrate's Court. In this divorce cause, number 0002 of 2016, Nakawaza Catherine, the petitioner versus David Michael Connell, has several claims and seeking several orders, including dissolution of the alleged customary marriage between David and Catherine, an order restraining David, the respondent, from accessing their matrimonial home an order for maintenance of the petitioner Catherine and her three children and return of the petitioner's land titles and other land documents. Corruption, impunity, compromise is the starting point. In this story, we will follow these claims and expose the injustices that David is going through to prove innocence and regain his property. The registrar sees a caveat, somebody has interest in the land as caveated and the registrar is bypassing to remove the what? the covet. So corruption in this country has to be dealt with seriously. David, in his journey, he has faced several injustices of corruption through judicial officers and police, who will cite case by case and order by order. Order 1, dissolution of alleged customary marriage between David and Catherine. Why should there be a divorce when there's no marriage? That's number one. Secondly, if there was a marriage, because I'm considered to be a non-African, that's what it says in the law, then the case has to be in the High Court, not a Chief Magistrate's Court. In PG Magistrate's Court, Her Worship Ruth Nabasa, the Chief Magistrate, in her judgment on 10th September 2021, ordered as follows. A. A declaration that the marriage between the petitioner and the respondent is dissolved. The respondent be restrained from permanently accessing the matrimonial home. The respondent provides maintenance of the petitioner and the three daughters. The custody of the three daughters be granted to the petitioner. The respondent return all the land titles for the properties registered in the names of the petitioner. That property acquired after the customary marriage be redistributed among the petitioner and the respondent. This raises the first red flag in this investigation, more so discussions around the jurisdiction of the court and the manner of the judgment. She didn't have jurisdiction to, to hold a divorce case, so she made up this about uh, she can hold it under the customary marriage law or customary marriage act, and then she went ahead to hold the whole thing under the divorce act. But his major cries and the compromise 
must have been in impeach, specifically in the lower court, the chief magistrate what? Court. Her worship, Ruth King, Nabasa ordered, but with gaps in her jurisprudence. Because there is a decision, but first of all you ask yourself, why didn't the court decide on the issue of jurisdiction? And which was raised before it, uh, and it had to just silence itself. I, I just like to expose the truth. That's simple. That's all. Section 207, subsection 1b, in the Magistrates Court Act provides that pecuniary jurisdiction of magistrate grade 1 shall not exceed 20 million shillings. Subsection 3 of Section 207 in the same Act states that it's incumbent on a plaintiff to state the value of the subject matter of a suit in the pleadings for purposes of legal action. This serves to mean that the question of jurisdictions is important in determining the authority to exercise by the court and where a magistrate grade 1 hears an action for trespass without stating the value of the subject matter, the court would be acting illegally and its decision is a proper case for revision. The judiciary spokesperson reaffirms this. If the matter is, between, is beyond 20 million shillings, that matter is beyond that magistrate and therefore the person cannot handle. The chief magistrate handles any matter where the monetary jurisdiction is not beyond 50 million. So if it is beyond 50 million, it has got to go to the high court. It is beyond that, that judicial officer. For the high court, we say it has an unlimited jurisdiction in terms of monetary. So it means that any amount of Money, any amount of a matter of any amount of money can be handled by by the High Court. It can be trillions, can be whatever it is. So it has unlimited jurisdiction. Her worship acted in error. That that was not right. If she didn't pay attention, I need to find out the reasons why she could not adhere to what had been advised. She's extremely corrupt, and she's not fit to be in the judiciary in any form. That's my opinion. David acquired and registered a good number of real estate properties in Catherine Stains during the couple's cohabitation. Property valued way above 50 million shillings. To mention, land situated in Chitende, Mengo, Nabingo, Buegere, Champisi, and Namayumba. During the trial, David presented documents showing bank transfers and bills of exchange to prove that he was the actual source of funds that paid for properties. What I want is to get my assets back because these are business investments. Okay, I can look after people, including Catherine, obviously my children, but I have to get my assets back. They're trying to, they're trying to run down my finances to get me out of Uganda. I just want justice, but it's very, very hard to get. In a bid to pursue justice, David filed for a regional court contesting the jurisdiction of the magistrate's court for handling a matter involving property whose value was beyond its jurisdiction of 20 million shillings. And on 2nd December 2021, a revision order was given. This was a sigh of some relief for David. What was purported to call the marriage was not what? A marriage. It was a nullity. There seems to be a belief we have so much wealth that we can afford to lose what we have because we have even more. It is not true. I was set up badly by the judiciary, including senior people which really shocked me. Uh, if there is an allegation of corruption in such a case, now we have, uh, we, have a, we have our department which deals with such cases, which is the inspectorate of courts. Now, when an, a complaint is raised there, they will now do an investigation. David Woods have ever since been on an upward spiral. Catherine, through her lawyer, Ralinda Jacob Godfrey, have acted contrary to the court's decision, and this raises many questions of integrity more in the pursuit of the law.
So that's so. So what happened? Um, sorry, I just it's not nice to remember this. Where are my children? Who are you to stay in my house and try and lock me out? You On 10th talk? September 2021, Catherine evicted David from his matrimonial home in Chengera. Well, I was told by the OC Chengera, I have no option. I have to leave the home that they have uh, an order, whatever, against me. I think he's a man who can love you when you don't have kids. When you don't have kids, the love is there. But if you get kids, of course you never liked kids, and kids can be. Then before, before the kids were in war, okay? This and more stunning. Among his other property was the over 120 acres land in Namayumba. And look at these criminals on my farm. David too got evicted. It's alleged that Catherine hired goons who almost lynched him. My client has tried several times to complain to the relevant authorities. He has gone to the police of the area. He has gone to even the division police. He has gone to the office of the RDC, and he has presented to them all the documentation to show he's in court. So these people should not be on the ground doing activities because it is going to cause even more justice. But they seem not to be forthcoming. He managed to type some evidence that day. This. He reported a case of trespass and destruction of property to a Kisa police station, but no action was taken against the criminals. I, I don't back down. I've never backed down all my life. A lot of us Irish are like that. And I'm not going to back down now. So, sometimes some people think if somebody is not a Ugandan, is a foreigner, doesn't know the laws governing here, you just take advantage of him and benefit. When they are applying the law, they apply the law according to the facts. A, a foreigner can win a case, a foreigner can lose a case. As it can be seen in this particular case, in the lower court, the foreigner lost. In the, in the, in the, in, when they went for revision, the foreigner won. So I don't think that is how it should be perceived that uh, because of the color, because of the, of the citizenship, the person is bound to lose a case, no. But how did David get here? David is at a butter front, but let's share a small secret of how this butter was crafted. We earlier in this investigation showed you Jen Chiwanuka, Catherine's mother. We'll take you back. She has a little secret. She let the cart out of the bag. Nice I've never actually spoken with my mom about that. No, I've never. I've never liked my mom's ways before, and I've never been that close, you know, like telling her anything about me. Yes, you heard her right. We'll listen again and have a loose translation. Mugende Muchirieko Sente. Go and steal from him. It's a setup. And this is what's happening in Uganda. And other people are suffering the same. When my mom found out that I have David, she went searching on the Facebook, looking out for Muzungu men. When I was with my mom, there are some words she would utter, actually, I can't take them out now, maybe I'll take them off the camera. When I did meet her, I went home to my family, and I just said, Dave's got a wrong one. That's all I'm going to say. He got a wrong one. Quite an evil mind and plan. This is a secret Jane has had with her daughter, Catherine Nakawosa, ever since she met David. And everything is going as planned. They want 50% of everything, or they don't give in. Now, I have to give Godfrey, Ruelinda, and Catherine, and whoever else is involved, 50% of everything I own in Uganda, including what's not even in court. I have to, for them to stop 
using the judiciary against me and the police against me.